this for two econial alloys, uh, 6, 25, and uh, 7, And uh, uh, we are interested in the manufacturing, and this work uh, results from a kind of collaboration between the University of Porto and the University of Porto, uh, the University of Science and Technology from Poland. Um, <coughs> So, um, this is the, the content of the presentation. I will make a short introduction, then I will go directly to the specimen manufacturing, and uh, I will present the results discussion in the following remarks. <coughs> so, uh, as I told you, uh, this is our objective to compare the fatigue growth rates between these two uh, alloys. Uh, and uh, uh, produced by additive manufacturing and uh, in this case we are uh, uh, using or applying different additive techniques for the uh, Incarnel 625 we are exploring the DED, direct energy deposition process and for the Incarnel 718 we are using the laser powder bed fusion technique um, so, these uh, alloys are very well known uh, due to the, the exceptional mechanical and chemical properties, so um, the high uh, uh, oxidation resistance. Uh, they have also very interesting uh, uh, high mechanical strength properties, uh, including high temperatures. Um, and the applications are uh, diverse, including offshore, nuclear turbines, exchange of components and uh, uh, <coughs> regarding these, these two uh, internal alloys uh, the main difference between them relies on the chemical composition uh, which uh, will result in different mechanical properties uh, for example the internal 625 we expect the minimum uh, uh, SI strength of about uh, 18, 30 megapascal and for the Connell 718 we expect a, a minimum of about 1030 megapascal um, Regarding the techniques we will apply in this uh, project uh, we are applying so uh, as I told you uh, we have in our facilities uh, this uh, process the direct energy position uh, where uh, we are using uh, we are, we are using a laser beam and we are mixing the powder uh, in a nozzle and we are uh, melting the powder and the project the melting powder to the part we are building. On the other side we have the SLEM or laser powder fusion process and in this case we have again laser uh, and we are uh, depositing a, a layer of powder and we are uh, melting the material layer by layer and uh, that way we are building our part. Typically, I would say that the, the process is more uh, could be applied for uh, repairing uh, components but also for build new parts. Uh, SLM, uh, I see this process more for producing, producing the new parts not for repairing existing components. Also, uh, uh, the DED process, in my experience, uh, uh, we could get uh, material with less porosity, so in terms of uh, internal defects, seems to be um, able to produce higher quality. However, regarding surface, uh, we usually get a rough surface uh, requiring the extra post-processing techniques like machining for the uh, resulting components. Okay, uh, so now I will uh, make a brief um, description of uh, the experimental details of the project. So this is uh, really uh, an ongoing project, so I have a few results to show today, but uh, we, I will describe the full uh, program here. So uh, we are interested not only on fatigue crack those properties but also um, on the SCM uh, data for these materials so uh, we have prepared the, the built uh, job uh, in order to foresee all the specimens we need in order to have the same exact uh, thermal history uh, on our material 
and uh, uh, in our DED system we have produced uh, this uh, axial uh, specimens we have also produced our CT uh, specimens in this case you can see that we have produced the specimens uh, printing a larger block and then we cut uh, our specimen using uh, wire uh, EDM um, regarding sorry, uh, well, in this slide we can see some uh, information about the processing parameters which is uh, usually uh, very difficult to tune because um, uh, it, there is a very uh, large number of parameters and in our case we usually take, need some time to tune uh, the process and to get uh, sound material with uh, almost 100% uh, density so uh, I am sharing with you uh, this information about the parameters and uh, then for the 625 uh, we have test material in the as build condition uh, this is uh, just a, a confirmation, a verification of the expected uh, strain properties and ductility for the Connell 625 regarding the uh, Connell 718 produced by SLM process in this case uh, we can since we are talking of a uh, more precise process we produce our specimens uh, basically in the final shape we are only needed to machine the notch for the, the, the CT specimen and the, the holes um, you can see here some details about the scanning strategy uh, I cannot go about this right now. Uh, here we have some microstructures for the Econel 718 uh, and in this case uh, uh, we have selected uh, two uh, post-processing treatments for the material. Why? Uh, usually uh, these materials could be uh, uh, annealed and uh, aged and in this case uh, we have selected that processes as well uh, in the, the, the H condition the H means uh, we applied the IP so the static pressure pressing process uh, afterwards we applied the solution aligning and aging so H means that uh, condition and A condition means that we have applied just solution annealing, annealing and aging without the, the IP process which the main objective is to close the internal pores in the material so uh, we have also evaluated the tensile properties for these two material conditions and basically what we uh, have changed uh, with the IP uh, is about the ductility so we, have, uh, we were able to collapse the internal defects in the material and it resulted in a very significant increase in ductility in the material uh, so now re regarding the uh, DADN delta K um, data so the fatigue rate growth rate, uh, rates the, uh, of these materials uh, so I'm showing now the first results we got for uh, the Econel 625 and uh, the, what we can say for the moment is that we have test two uh, different stress ratios uh, 0.1 and 0.5 and in the region uh, where we expect the linear well, the Paris regime uh, we didn't observe the so uh, significant influence of the stress ratio of course we expect that uh, uh, will change for sure for the near threshold regime so for the moment we have test for specimens we are still on uh, we are still testing and uh, we will uh, make more tests in this regime line just to confirm what could be the influence uh, in this uh, more sensitive uh, region about the material orientation because I forgot to mention so in the TED uh, uh, material 625 we have test two orientations so the parallel uh, to build direction and the perpendicular to build direction so uh, we can see here that there is no significant influence uh, 
regardless of the material orientation and uh, the stress ratio. Um, so uh, we, we uh, identified the so-called Paris Law, uh, which is very well known from you for sure. Then we went to literature, yeah, uh, just to check what uh, all our material uh, fits to the existing data, because uh, we have already a lot of data in literature. So we realized that our material is very consistent with the literature, the information. So, uh, and in literature, we uh, that uh, were observed some directional uh, influence on material properties, but uh, in our case, it was not uh, uh, observed such, such influence. We also compared our material with uh, conventional road material and we observe very uh, consistent uh, behavior. So this is for us a good indication that we are producing uh, our material in, with good quality. We also observe some striation. So I believe now that my presentation will be not so uh, uh, relaxed because we have a uh, few time. But, uh, and the picture is not so good, but uh, there is, uh, in this internal noise, we observe the striations uh, very clearly. And we try to correlate those striations with the fatigue rate growth. And we observe that more or less each striation corresponds to about six to seven cycles for a specific uh, delta K uh, value. Then um, those striations we also observed in our uh, fatigue uh, tests uh, using the cylindrical specimens. This is just to show you what we observe. So we are trying to, to match uh, this, this uh, SEM data with the previous data on fatigue propagation. Regarding the Cornell 7, uh, 18, uh, in this case, uh, material was subjected to the heap process and uh, to the annealing solution and uh, aging. Uh, so the A and H condition. And we have test two stress ratios. So what I can say now is that uh, the heap process did not influence uh, our fatigue rate growth rates. Uh, which, from my understanding, it's uh, acceptable because we are talking of internal defects uh, and uh, does not influence the fatigue rate uh, propagation. Uh, but uh, we have observed this uh, stress ratio influence in this material. Then, when we compared both materials, uh, Deconel 718 and Deconel 635, we can see that uh, for the Stress ratio equal to 0.1. We can see this um, higher fatigue growth for the uh, Cornell 625, and uh, for R equal to 0.5, we see almost some uh, match between the two materials. So from this, I believe that the next step will be look for the correct closure, just to understand if uh, uh, there is uh, an explanation from that side for this behavior. Uh, so uh, again, for the Inconel 718, we observe some striations, not so clear as in the 625 uh, Inconel, uh, but we can see some uh, transgranular uh, fracture and some striations in material. But uh, to be honest, uh, the fracture uh, surface in the crack parts did not change significantly when we do the hip uh, treatment or not the doing that, so we are getting pretty much the same uh, fatigue crack propagation path and fracture uh, uh, surfaces. Comparing the information about the Inconel 718 with the literature, what we observe here, uh, a very good agreement between our properties and the material supplied uh, in the road condition, so conventional <coughs> material, let's say. But uh, when, when we are going to the literature and we try to compare the information from different uh, well, uh, additive um, uh, sources, so from um, different uh, materials processed by additive manufacturing, in this case, the scatter uh, is very large, as you can see, and this uh, makes uh, sense to me. So there is a lot of work to do because we need to certify these materials and this, for me, is the big issue. How could we make our material 
similar and get the same results be between different laboratories. In this case, we are we are testing the same machine, both materials, so we are discarding the laboratory bias, but uh, that information about the scatter for the additive materials is really uh, a concern and a challenge. Uh, so this is the final conclusions. They are just a summary of, of what I have uh, presented. I don't know if I can say something about okay. the yeah? So, uh, just summarizing, uh, regarding the DED process, uh, we didn't uh, observe, in our case, uh, the orientation influence on fatigue craft propagation. Uh, also, uh, the mean stress effects uh, were not um, visible. I believe that as, since we test our material in as built condition, residual stresses, for sure, may mask this, this, this uh, behavior. And uh, for the uh, Econel 718, uh, in this case, since we have it treated material solution uh, uh, annealing and uh, aging, so we are more or less homogenized and recover the original material structure. So in this case, we observe the mean stress effects of the material. And uh, um, let's say uh, we have still some work to do. Uh, for me, the next will be to make more tests just to have confirmation of some uh, observations and correct closure again. Uh, I think it's, uh, it is required for our study. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your nice information, uh, presentation. Do we have any questions? I guess the this is more of a comment. I, um, I think using CT specimen geometry like we have been using for years, that's for conventional manufacturing where you try to apply that information to components like an aircraft wing. Additive manufacturing process is not meant for those kind of situations. So in additive manufacturing, it's more of a 3D geometry where a small crack growth controls life. Therefore, the region of interest in crack growth is really the threshold region, not the long crack, long crack region. Uh, and I think when you go to the threshold region, you will see all of the kind of effects, like surface roughness and defects and uh, residual stresses. So all of those small details show up there. And that's really the region of interest okay. uh, in many applications of additive manufacturing. Okay. Well, thank you for it. Yeah, yes. Yeah, regarding, you know, it's interesting, there was no significant difference in the, you know, impact of the heat treatments on the yeah. two different materials and all that. Was there, anyway, uh, one question is, you know, what do you attribute that to? Secondly, was any attempt made to quantify the voids, you know, in the US, you know, yeah. manufactured yeah. and yeah. post uh, heat yeah. and all that? <coughs> Yes, uh, good question. Uh, I, I think it's more or less related to what Fatemi uh, has uh, referred. So, uh, micro, micro defects is related to the early stages of crack propagation. So, mm -hmm. in this case, since we are uh, uh, trying to uh, quantify macro crack propagation, these micro defects will be uh, not accounted for this uh, macro analysis, let's say. Okay. That's why the, uh, this HIP uh, treatment did not uh, have effect on, on uh, our data because we are just doing micro propagation. Um, if we can control or uh, assess the internal effects, yes, we can. Um, there is, uh, in my friend laboratory, a very nice uh, equipment which is uh, CT, uh, so uh, CT scan. Uh, and the, uh, they can perform the full uh, inspection of the material and uh, evaluate the effect of the IP process. I believe that there could be information to <coughs> <you> would wish. <coughs> we did some comparisons with this. And of course, exit to test, we saw observed uh, differences in the, the fatigue behavior of, of both materials. 
So you saw a difference, but it was not. But in the in the, the high high fatigue ratio. Well, it didn't affect the results. Oh, yes, because it was a little bit different part of. Uh, right. Okay. Thank you. But of course. Okay. Thank you once again. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank